having a kid in the family, like it makes failure like literally not an option for me. Like I can't quit. In this video, I interview one of my students, Tal, and we dive right into his story of how he was able to go from being overweight, working a depressive nine to five job at a nuclear plant to starting and scaling his ecom agency past the 10K a month mark and getting in shape and transforming his life while being a parent of a 16 month baby at 23. It's an incredible story. You're gonna take a lot of value nuggets from. And so without further ado, let's get right into it. How's it going, Tal? It's going good. How are you doing, Jaime? I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm, uh, I've had an intense day, but uh, I'm excited for this conversation. Um, let me get this right. Okay, and I'll get into, into the story and the, every single, you know, hairy, juicy detail. But seven months ago, I mean, possible, right? You are a father of one girl or boy? Boy, boy, he's uh, about 16 months old now. So yeah. Okay, cool. Congrats. Um, you're a father of a boy. Seven months ago, you're working at a nuclear plant, right? Just your regular nine to five, correct? Yeah, just an office job at a nuke plant, making, especially for where I live in Arkansas, really good, really good salary. Um, and then you go ahead and you decide to make the jump and start a, a business, right? You take the mentorship, you take my mentorship and uh, fast forward to today, you're making 10K per month with your, right. um, and you've been able to scale your, your revenue. So I want to jump uh, in, into the, you know, every single portion of that story. Um, of course, uh, it's a pretty cool, cool story, especially because you've been able to grow uh, this business in, in such a quick fashion. Uh, but I want to, I want to, you know, I, I want to get a bit of an idea as to what attracted you to the agency model us, right? And then what resonated with you to start the e-com agency route, right? Because a lot of people go into the SMA space, um, they hear about it and they're like, cool, you know, th this sounds like a cool business model, but why the e-com agency route? Yeah. So to really do justice to that story, I have to go back to like March, February, March of this year, 2021, I had my wisdom teeth removed and that is extremely painful. Like it just hurt for weeks and weeks. I couldn't sleep. I stayed up to like three, four, five a.m. every day because I couldn't sleep. Um, and I came across this YouTube ad for this other course about social media marketing agency. And I was like, "What is this?" You know. So I started watching it. Uh, long story short, I tried that course. Tried to convince a friend to get in on it with me. We were going to do local restaurants, do some ads for him. Ended up not going anywhere. And I said, "You know what? Forget this." But for some reason, I decided to do one last YouTube search to see, you know, if I could find anything out there. And that's when I found your YouTube channel. I started watching it and I was like, oh, God, <laughs> dang, you know, the, the, the value you were giving for free in your videos was better than the course I had just paid for. And, you know, I heard you preaching about the, the e-com model and, you know, how you can structure ad profit deals and all those things that just resonated more with me, right? You have a much broader reach too. You can work with anyone in the world. So that's what really got me set on e-com specifically. You decided to quit that job, right? That you had at the nuclear plant. Um, what was it about that life that just didn't, um, just didn't really attract you, right? Uh, and we get into to all the hairy details of, of how you were able to scope that e-com agency. But uh, going back to, to that nine to five, what was it about that that just wasn't really for you? And what made you go, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit this? Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> so as far as time goes, that was actually it wasn't a bad job. It was four days a week, ten hours a day, but it was the same thing every day. And you know, I had a boss, and they're again great people. But when it came to the actual structure of that business, there was no room for growth. Like I was doing the same thing every day, and I I could just see like there is no way out of this. And same thing with previous jobs I've had. Like I could look around at my coworkers. I used to be an EMT on an ambulance and everyone was overweight, depressed. They hated their lives. They were 40 or 50 years old. And that was my future I was looking at. So f from, you know, years ago, early on, I knew that I needed to do something for myself and start a business. And yeah, that's what didn't appeal to me is everyone just following the same sort of steps. And I could tell by just looking at them, they weren't happy with where they ended up. Had you tried anything before uh, at that point? Like, had you had you dabbled into different uh, business models, or had you uh, gotten a, blim a glimpse of uh, 
some sort of like personal development um, that you've done in the past? Yeah, I, I've started I've started businesses before uh, that didn't last long. And I started like a pressure washing business at one point. You know, my family could probably tell you there's been plenty of little businesses I've started up that have never gone anywhere. And about a year ago, this time last year, I was 30 pounds heavier. I was pretty depressed, like mentally just not very sharp. And then I started, uh, you know, building up discipline by working out and dieting. And that's what I, you know, attribute the drive that I have to to do this is because I had started building up that discipline. And then by the time I found your videos and reached out about the mentorship, like I was already, I was truly prepared to like make a change in my life because I already had, but then I was ready to take those, that discipline and like apply it to business. For a lot of people watching, right? They may be in a, in a, a similar space as, as you were back when you were like overweight. I mean, we spoke about this off camera, right? But you weren't um, like you don't have the, the healthiest of habits, right? Um, some of them like quite negative, right? Uh, what was one made, like what, what was the one, the, the, the switch, right? Um, that got turned on in your head or, or what, what was that initial motivation to, you know, get things going uh, for you, right? Because a lot of people feel stuck. They're like, yeah, that's cool. That's easier said than done. Like it's, it's a really cool story, right? But a lot of people uh, listening to this, maybe they're overweight. Maybe they're not, you know, they don't have a very healthy lifestyle. Maybe they, they don't, you know, they don't have the motivation or discipline to actually get to work and do what they need to be, you know, they know they need to be doing. So what was that initial motivation, uh, that initial trigger to start building that momentum? So initially <laughs> what, what sort of set this all off was, I looked in the mirror one day and I, I used to be, and still am to this day, but I used to be very into rock climbing and I was in pretty good shape. And then, you know, life happened. And one day I looked in the mirror and I just saw who was looking back at me. I'm like, who are you? You know, like you had this huge gut and just, uh, it just right then it was like, this has to end. So what I did was I, I made that decision immediately to go find a diet coach and pay them money. Like for me, if I'm investing you know, a significant amount of money into something for me, that's going to keep me accountable. Like I needed that accountability. So I, I paid this guy, gave me a diet, started following it. Or no, sorry, I actually did the, the personal trainer first. And then I did the diet a few months later. But, you know, having someone there holding me accountable was what kept me at it. Mm -hmm. And how would you say, I mean, because I, I want to, dive into the eco agency side of things and maybe a lot of people are listening to that right but uh, i want to touch on on your personal life first how would you say uh fatherhood if at all right um affected the way you started viewing the world that, did that have any impact for you was there any sort of like switch that when i'm just curious right because at one point i'm probably gonna, you know i'm definitely going to be a father myself so was there any any like sort of um you know, change in your demeanor, in the way you carried yourself, maybe like a, a new, newly added responsibility in your life that made you um, also change the, the, the way you, you, you view the world? Yeah. So, I mean, that is, it's an interesting question because there's kind of like two sides to that. Number one was going from a really stable job at the nuke plant with a kid to like try something that I have not proven to myself I could do. So, that 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 was a you know a a difficult decision to make that fortunately my wife supported me through uh, mm. but then moving what, on past what was that conversation like what was that conversation like with your wife because again going back to you know people watching this as well like I, I, you know I, I obviously if you have a family it, it's harder to to make those bossy moves in your life right like quitting a job or how was that conversation how did she agree to this you know like how 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 did that go yeah, fortunately, she was pretty supportive of it. Um, obviously, a little bit nervous, but there wasn't any arguments or anything like that. I just, you know, she trusted me, and it was, it was. Uh, <laughs> she was a little skeptical when I said, "Hey, I'm going to start a, I'm going to start a marketing agency, and this guy from Spain is going to teach me how to do it." <laughs> She's like, "Who is this guy?" Uh, but overall, I mean, it was a pretty, um, thankfully, like a pretty easy conversation to have with her. Um, yeah, I, I definitely say if someone else is trying to do that, they just need to have like an honest conversation with their partner and, and make sure that y'all can financially, it helped that we had some savings to, you know, we weren't living paycheck to paycheck at the time. Uh, so yeah. And then to finish the other question, 
having a kid in the family, like it makes failure, like literally not an option for me. Like I can't quit. Mm-hmm. There's been times over the past seven months, like I may have like, man, it'd be easier just to just quit and just chill out today mm-hmm. and eat, eat food, chill on the couch, watch TV, but it's not an option. Like it's, it, it, it's, it's taken quitting completely out of the, the vocabulary for me. What were some of those moments where you felt like quitting? Where maybe like a specific scenario? Um, maybe I don't know. Your first sales call goes completely wrong, right? I mean, w- was there any like specific instance during the agency journey that made you go, oh, "Shit, this this isn't what I expected it to be"? Yeah, it's you know those uh, really early on when I was having these sales calls, these you know, demo calls and strategy sessions, I was really emotionally invested into the prospects, like way more than I should have been. I had already envisioned Mm -hmm. myself like, you know, becoming these people's friends and making them a lot of money before we had even talked. Like, that's just not, you can't do that. And at first you're probably, at least for me, I I did it. It It's just, you know, so, um, when I did that and then they told me no, or they maybe ghosted me or however it went down and it didn't work out into a deal like that hit me hard (laughs) like harder but now i don't i don't approach it the same way like i had a a a call earlier today with a company and i don't know if it'll turn into anything but the mindset i go into stuff now is just provide as much value as i can meet the people figure out what's going on in their business and if it works out it works out if it doesn't we had a good conversation and we move on that's a really uh, good point, right? Uh, I feel like for a lot of people, it's even more extreme. Uh, before even reaching out to the company, they're already imagining working with them. It's like, you know, oh, you know, they're putting so much uh, thought into, um, or, or so much emotion, right? Because it, it is important to put thought into your outreach strategy and all that stuff, right? But they're putting so much emotion behind the outreach uh, that uh, to, to a, a very large extent, that paralyzes a lot of people. Is there any like story of yours where, I mean, really, really what was the biggest no or a no that hit the hardest where you thought it was deal done, but it just went completely south, ignored you. And I want to get into one of those stories to really have people see that uh, this journey can be extremely, um, you know, satisfying, but it's it's obviously a, a path filled with obstacles and, and things to overcome. Oh yeah, that's it's one thing everything should know, like, it's it's a lot of problem solving any any business um yeah there was there was one there's been several times where uh i was emotionally invested um there there was one time in particular where you know we we had several calls with this company um again i really liked what they did they were in a space that i cared a lot about and it just when it came down to it they, they they told me no and uh, they told me no over email, like they, they, that's how we followed up with each other. And yeah, it just, it hit me hard. And I remember like making a video, like a loom video and sent, I don't know, mm. <laughs> I think I sent it to some people like breaking down the experience and I was pretty emotional and I ended up deleting it later. To like fellow, fellow students. Yeah. Like some other, you know, mentees and, uh, yeah, it's just, <laughs> it, it was rough, you know, but it was, a. Uh, sort of forged in the fire moment like mm. i don't i don't get that way anymore and you you don't need to be that way like at first you may be but you need to look at it in a different way you need to detach yourself emotionally it's business it's not personal yeah very good points um on the flip side what was the moment where you had that and, and we all have this false victory that gives us that momentum, that gives us the, that, that proof of concept, like, shit, this actually works, right? And, and you feel like you're at the top, right? <laughs> and then obviously you learn a bunch of lessons, uh, uh, you know, and, and we'll get into, into that false client experience for you. But what was that moment for you uh, where you felt like this is going to be something that has longevity, like this is going to be something that changes your life and, and your family's life? I'd say, you know, the first client, signing them on, get hitting that, having that payment hit the bank account was was awesome uh and then like after that i signed two more relatively quickly within like the next two or three weeks after that and then those were both like in the same week so that was that was really cool too like 
right then and there, that was the kind of the that's where I proved that like this works, right? Uh, and then losing that first client <laughs> was also like mm-hmm. uh, a big learning experience. Like I'm wouldn't take it back for the world. Obviously, it sucked to lose him, but uh, yeah. definitely better. And I know way more because of that experience. Yeah. Let, let's talk about that experience because um, I know you wrote a post in the in the student community in the mastermind that we've got in the private mastermind that we've got for uh, all the mentees and and a lot of people find a lo- found a lot of value out of it, right? Because it was a very honest, raw look at that first client leaving you, right? What were some of the the biggest lessons that you learned uh, that you took? from that first client leaving you that you implemented later down in, in, in the journey and had a big impact. Hmm. Yeah, it was uh, setting expectations with the, the client before, you know, when you're in those initial calls, you can't promise them the world. Like the way I had just sort of, I, I didn't promise them crazy numbers, but the way I had framed everything was basically, I kind of told them within the first month, we're going to be at this number, this number of sales. And if not, um, we actually had a money back guarantee on this particular, uh, client. Cause they were my first, I was ready to get them. I don't, I don't do that anymore, <laughs> but, uh, and the, yeah, it just wasn't the ideal client. Their website had some issues. Um, just overall, like I was very eager to get that first client and I made some sort of exceptions that I wouldn't do today. And yeah, at the end of the first month, we ended up losing them. It definitely let me learn a lot about my media buyer, which is not the current media buyer I'm working with. But uh, yeah, overall, it was a great experience. Like it truly taught me what it was to have a client and manage a team. One of the, and we'll talk about managing a team and, and that whole experience. One of the uh, things that have has given you an edge and, and that gives uh, the mentees in the program an edge is the fact that you picked specific sub niche within e-commerce right and um that was a sub niche that resonated with you you can tell the audience what that what that sub niche is uh, if you want to but how would you how would you say um that sub niche impacted your your results and also your enjoyment uh of building this agency yeah so my agency focuses on active lifestyle slash like outdoor recreation brands and the, the brands we work with, like I, I'm the customers for, I'm like, I'm, a, I'm the customer for the brand, right? So I know how the customers think already. Like I understand the products. It's great to work with things that I like to do. Like I like to rock climb and skydive and, you know, fish and skateboard and getting to work in those industries is great. And it also really helps that I already speak the lingo. Like when I hop on these calls, like for example, mm. the, the rock climbing client, um, that I have right now in those initial calls, climbers have a lot of lingo and sort of, we have this hidden language and being able to speak that with him. He's like, okay, you know, this guy understands me. Same thing with the skateboarding guy. Uh, right. I'm not the greatest skateboarder in the world, but I know the way they speak and we were able to communicate on that level. It's not like I don't know anything about what they're doing. And then I want to work with them. It's, I, I work with people that I already enjoy the industry they're in so yeah and so do they right at the end of the day if you're a founder and you're looking for an agency um if this agency obviously presents a clear process to results right uh and they speak your lingo and and they actually resonate with what you sell they are your customers so they can speak so they 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 have a an insider's almost advantage right then obviously that's going to be a clear choice um, and that does a, a lot of heavy lifting and, and puts your head of a lot of well-established agencies. Absolutely. Yeah. There's a, I have not come across really any outdoor recreation agencies. Like I'm, I'm the only one I've seen that advertises themselves as such. And if anyone out there is about to start one, go for it. <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm ready for the competition. Yeah. You know, um, I actually, you don't want to, you, you don't want to go head to head against style. I'll, I'll tell you, <laughs> I'll tell you guys that much. I did come across one uh, agency that just did rock climbing, and mm-hmm. apparently I had like been reaching out to a lot of their clients, and they got they did not like that. I got a nasty email from one of the 
one of the people running the agency and they're like, you need to lay off. It's come to our attention. You've been messaging a lot of our colleagues. You need to s- cease immediately. They're not <laughs> interested. I didn't even know who they're call- who they're talking about. But I just said, you know well, what? Definitely they're, they were, they were paying attention though. Those clients. Yeah. Yeah. I think what like if happened if they was, brought it forward to, if they brought it forth then. Yeah. They were probably, the clients were probably like, why aren't we doing what this guy was saying? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And all I said back was, you know, if I <laughs> said, if I see uh, something along the lines of a gap in, a, in, in your client's strategy, I'm going to reach out. <laughs> oh, bring it on. <laughs> bring it on. Yeah. Um, it, it's kind of crazy to think, right? That, that um, you know, I, I get these questions all the time. I did a, a Q&A recently and I get questions like, uh, do you think the e-com agency space is saturated? Do you think SME is saturated? It is if you do the exact same thing that everyone is doing right if you don't if you never think of building a monopoly agency if you don't think of narrowing down into a specific sub niche if you don't understand the lingo um of your clients like someone who actually lives breathes and sleeps that sub niche does right obviously it's going to be saturated for you and you can struggle a lot to get results right but if you start thinking like most people are not thinking and you start doing things differently to how most people are doing things that that uh, enter the the sma space then you can have accelerated growth um, so it's, it's, it's great to see an example of such a niche agency having such massive success, right? In, in such little time. Oh yeah. I've had people tell me time and time again that it's, you know, it's awesome that I am in this niche, right? That I only work with brands, you know, in a very specific way. So I could not imagine trying to just target e as a whole. Like there's just so much out there. You'd have trouble really Right, like when you you wouldn't write the same message you would to your grandma as you would your girlfriend. Same sort of same sort of concept. You need to have a a clear system and a clear sort of area to operate in. And another great benefit is the fact that the process to results is slightly similar, right? Like it's it's obviously not the same, but it's very different when you're getting uh, results for a pearl fashion. Um, to when you're getting results for some type of outdoor rec um, device or any, any of that sort of stuff. So on the results front, have you seen an overlap in um, funnels that are proven to work for a certain type of client that you can use for uh, a client that you've just onboarded? Uh, how has that helped you when it comes to uh, service delivery, if at all? Oh yeah, for sure. You know, if we see one strategy is working really well, you know, over in the, say the climbing industry, testing it out in the, you know, fishing industry is something we've done and it, it works, you know, just as well. Uh, there are obviously there's different people that are buying each product and you have to tailor the approach, but the overall like underlying systems, um, we have seen a lot of like, yeah, overlap for sure. On the, I want to talk about the 360 approach, right? That, that I talk extensively about in, in the mentorship program, uh, how it's not just about midi buying, and that's very well sorted by uh, our media buyer, but that we have this 360 approach where we look at the, uh, a bunch of things, right? So um, we'll, we'll, we'll get into it in, in just a bit, but what are some of the, the, the concepts of the 360 approach that you've uh, enjoyed the most? Um, as in like, have you done any sort of landing page work that has worked tremendously well or what, what is what is it about the 360 approach that that um that you enjoy and, and that you you found um, a value in yeah um you know having that understanding that a business is more than just its advertisements that even if your ads are really killing it doesn't mean sales are there so that's you know being able to look at other parts of the brand and see maybe what's what's going on. Uh, so, you know, we've had a client who, again, the ads are killing it, really good metrics, but at the end of the day, conversions weren't really there. So we looked at the website and that's where the, the shortcoming was. So we, we built out a, a new landing page, um, you know, gave it to him and then, you know, it's picking up. It, it's great to be able to, it's great to hear from your clients that uh, they appreciate that you're not just hyper-focused on one thing, even though, um, you're really focused on right your your service, paid advertising. I've had people tell me you know they can they love that we don't just stop there and that we're act- actively like trying to help them in other areas because ultimately it's going to improve everything if you can improve the website. Has that helped you maintain uh, uh, clients that 
uh, especially when results took a hit. Like the fact that you were doing all this stuff for them, right? The fact that the value wasn't just on the media buying side of things. Has that helped you at all um, uh, maintain them throughout those mm -hmm. uh, tough periods? Yeah, I'd say uh, it has. We've only, you know, due to just different circumstances, every, every client is so unique due to different circumstances. We're kind of just at the uh, moving past the initial period with a lot of these clients. So that's still something I'm going to be actively trying to figure out as we move on. But they've definitely appreciated it for sure. I think one of the great things about that 360 approach especially for the, the agency owners, the fact that it increases the switching cost uh, by a lot, right? The fact that, you know, you're not just their ads guy or their ads agency, right? But the fact that, you know, now you've, you've, uh, you've uh, poked at their landing page, right? You've, you've given them tips or even built that landing page for them, right? Um, or given them like a, a very solid high, high converting um, a structure for that. You've looked at, you know, you've, you've maybe given them uh, a few tips on how to create high converting creatives, right? Copy, um, you know, f even the offer. Has there has there been a time maybe, and, and this is just um, like a, a random question, but uh, has there been any client for which you've uh, tweaked their offer slightly? Like you've told them like, hey, let's, let's actually switch this up a little bit um, because this is not maybe gonna work uh, for cold ads. Yeah. Uh there's this one client we're still kind of in the the testing phase to figure out the product is so unique um it's something that a lot of people aren't going to be used to in this specific uh the rock climbing industry it's really a, a new innovation um so one, one of the things we've definitely done is tweak the price and tweak how we're uh on the landing page we're actually phrasing everything and, and showing it off and really leveraging like ugc and you know, lifestyle images, actually showing it in use. But uh, it's definitely, you know, uh, we're, we're trying to determine if there's a product market fit because for this product, um, which, yeah. Leadership and uh, managing a team. You've been through a few media buyers, um, although I, I would probably say that most of the media buyers you've hired, like, they had signs of being an A player, but we'll dive uh, in, into what, you know, what, what didn't quite work for you. Uh, you've also hired a bunch of VAs, right? And now you've gotten, you've, you, you've, it seems like you found, uh, from what you told me uh, before the call, it seems like you found a killer VA. What are some of the common patterns, whether it's a VA, a media buyer, right? What are some of the common patterns that make for a great team member that, uh, that you found throughout this uh, short journey so far? Yeah, so, so far, um, I think it's easy to find someone who is like technically skilled at whatever they're doing, whether that's media buying or uh, being a VA. Like it's, it's easy to find those people that have tons of experience and can achieve those results. Where it's harder to find people is people that are actually good at communication and actually like clicking in with your team. So that has been the sort of... Uh, the struggle, especially at the beginning, was finding those people. Um, definitely had some turnover in the process of finding that and learned a lot about how to fire somebody. <laughs> Still not a fan of that part. Um, but also what, just had- What were some of the things that, that, what were some of the things that, that you learned? Uh, some of the, the few points that, that you took away from those experiences? Yeah, well, to be completely honest, I'll just share this. It, it was a complete failure on my part, um, which I'm, learned from so i'll share my failure here i didn't really communicate very well to my first media buyer his shortcomings and then when it did come to i just let it build up inside of me and it was like this toxic mess mm. like i just started resenting him for it and then when i it, when it came to fire him he had not heard about my critiques right it was kind of the first time right. he had heard it so that wasn't a great situation, definitely a failure of leadership on my part. But moving forward from that, it's, you know, I've got to learn how to, and something I'm doing now is communicating to people beforehand, right? Um, mm. Letting them know about where they need to improve uh, and letting them know what I think about their performance. It's a common mistake, and I've definitely made it myself. I've learned from it as well. 
um, the other day you asked me, right? Uh, like you you painted this this other situation with the media buyer, and you asked me um, for the audience to, <laughs> to to hear. Like you asked me, look, this media buyer um, is is really good at at his craft, but when it comes to communication, like it's you know he he's not super consistent, right? Um, and I think I should fire him because I've got this backup, which is very important, by the way. I've got this backup, you know, seems like a, a great dude and, and, and it would, seems like a, it's a great fit, right? And I asked you, have you communicated this to him, right? Uh, before you, you know, you might as well have that conversation, you know, have a conversation of what you're not liking and potentially even give him a little warning like, hey, if this carries on, you know, obviously we're going to we're gonna have to uh, to end it here, unfortunately, right? Uh, and I feel like it's, 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 it sounds simple, yet when you're in the trenches, it's kind of hard to see until like a third person tells you like, dude, just tell him, like, what do you not like? Instead of like bo boiling it down, you know, uh, ba basically keeping it to yourself and then making a drastic, bold decision, like you're fired, right? And the person is like, I, I don't know what I did wrong. Uh, simply because you haven't communicated that. Yeah, it's, it's definitely a, a complete different experience when you are the, you're the guy in charge, right? Like there's, you know, every other job I've had, I didn't have to do any of this stuff. Other people handled it, <laughs> yeah. but now it's it's all down to you. Like the success or failure of it is on you, on me, right? What are some of the 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 things that has helped you? You know, on the flip side, right? Because uh, we talked about a, a failure of yours, but what are some of the things that have helped you cultivate a better uh, culture, a better team dynamic, get people more excited about uh, about your vision? What are some of the the, the, the things that maybe you've implemented that that, has, that, that you've seen a, a positive impact from? Yeah, I'd say, uh, you know, not always keeping things, you know, we don't always talk about like business, I guess, like for the first few minutes of uh, our meetings, whenever, when we meet every week, just type, like to keep things light, just talk about life. Like I know some of what's going on in their lives. They know some of what's going on in mine. Uh, we talk about that. Um, as well as just yeah, trying to maintain that, um, and also communicating them, communicating to them like up front the sort of culture that I'm trying to build, which is like a team culture. Not that, not that <laughs> I hate the. Sometimes I hate it when people say they want to build a team because in, in the corporate world they always say that, but it's like this mindless just hive of like people that hate their lives. And that's not what I'm trying <laughs> yeah. to do. Like I just want uh, you know a group of people that don't hate each other, you know, enjoy, enjoy to work together and, uh, can get stuff done. So when it came to, um, essentially, I mean, to, to give the audience a bit of, um, a bit of insight, right. On, on the communication protocols that you guys, uh, follow, is there any like specific meetings that you've set with these people? Like, um, are there any communication protocols that you've set for them, uh, with their clients? Um, yeah. Can you give the, the audience a bit of insight on some of the things that you've implemented? Yeah, so um, a lot of what I've implemented is, you know, uh, laid out in the the mentorship. But a weekly a weekly meeting that my team I actually have a media buyer and a copywriter for those uh, listening. When I say they, that's who I'm referring to. You don't need a copywriter, but I found a great guy and love him. So we do we have a weekly meeting where we talk about client performance, and then as far as the media buyer, uh, his communication goes. Every Friday, he makes uh, an update, a Loom update for our clients, uh, going over like performance, action steps for next week, just laying everything out there. And then over the weekend, uh, the team checks it out, we review it, and then on Monday, we send it off. And also just, you know, staying active and communicating to clients via Slack, where we have everybody on. Outside of um, the agency, what, how, how would you say like you structure your day, right? Because I feel like that's another, uh, that's one of the, the biggest struggles that, that people face, right? Like they don't really know how to structure their day. Uh, and they're, you know, they pretty much just spend their day in a frantic blur of uh, social media, the latest new hack, reading a bunch of articles and, uh, you know, all in all very little execution, right? How, what works for you? Because I know you're not a super like, I do 30 minutes of you know meditation. Uh, I I drink uh, five liters of water. I take this many you know uh, supplements. Like what essentially? What is your routine that works that that you've seen work for you? So I started off um, at the beginning of all this with a fairly strict schedule. Now having a child and you know especially a baby child proved 
to challenge this a little bit, um, especially with my wife in school and everything. But uh, I used to wake up at about 5 a.m. Now I wake up, you know, about 7 a.m. every day and really just get to work within the next 30 minutes to an hour. You know, eat breakfast, then get to work. My morning, I have a morning work block, and I have lunch, and then an afternoon work block, and then I go to the gym or, you know, whatever it is. I'm going to, I try to be active, you know, every day. So go to the gym, go on a hike, walk, whatever it is. Uh, and then, yeah, just usually come back, do a little bit more work. And then I'm the type of person that would work all day long, literally from waking up to going to bed. And sometimes I wish I could do that. But, you know, having a kid and a family, <laughs> I usually stop mm. about 5 p.m. And then just spend time with them. Okay. So that's how you balance all that, right? Like you, you have a hard stop or what, what does that look like? Uh, yeah, I'd say it's a pretty hard stop. It's not like 5 p.m. immediately, maybe 5.20 one day. But yeah, within 20, 30 minutes, I just have to yeah. kind of walk away. Uh, you know, I'm glad we're talking about this because um, a big message that is pushed in the uh, hustle culture and the personal development space is like, if you're not working 24-7, if you're not uh, working seven days a week for like, you know, I'm putting in 12-hour days, you cannot get, you know, you cannot move the needle. Um, yet it's not about, I mean, this cliche, right? But it's not about uh, particularly how many hours you work, but what you put into those hours and how effective your work is, especially in the agency space, right? There's so many people that just spend like eight hours a day sending out, you know, banging out a bunch of cold emails. Um, and that does little for their growth. Uh, so I think it's, 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 it's cool to see, right? That someone that has a family, someone that used to have a, a, a nine to five, uh, could still do this uh, while maintaining his health, maintaining uh, what, what's important to to me, to, to, to him in, in his life. Yeah, absolutely. The big difference between just working and then like focused work, right? Deep work. We are actually getting stuff done because I could, I could sit here for eight hours and do stuff, but it's going to be a lot less effective versus like two hours of like you are in the zone getting it done. What helps you get in, into that zone? Uh, what helps me? I drink a lot of water. I don't, uh, I cut out soda. Um, occasionally I'll drink a Coke Zero because it, but it's still caffeine. I should probably cut out caffeine entirely, but Coke Zero and then Red Bull Sugar Freeze. They're kind of my weakness right now. I try not to drink a lot <laughs> okay. of them, but cool. <laughs> just, I do drink I had a lot a face. of water. I, I do, I did have a face, um, when I was running my agency and, and doing a uni where I had a, a Red Bull sugar-free face, and uh, it's it's hard to kick it. <laughs> I'll tell I'll tell you that uh, yeah. there is something about I don't know. I mean, I, I used to have it like at like, uh, 12 p.m. because I used to wake up like super early. Uh, so when that Red Bull sugar-free hit, but then obviously you've got the crash, which is not great. <laughs> which is not great at all. I will say this: the the person I am today is not the person I need to be like six months from now, as far as how my schedule looks my day-to-day -day, like my there's still a few habits and need to be kicked and stuff like that um yeah i'd say it's just about that personal development too where do you see yourself in in six months and what do you think needs to happen on the personal side of things um to get to that point hmm <laughs> where do i see myself in six months I see myself. I hate, I hate this type of questions, by the way. It doesn't have to be super specific because so many things can change, right? But uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, as far as the agency side of things, I've at a different place than I am now, more clients, but that's not the important part to me. It's the, the more of the personal journey, to be honest, because after a certain point, as far as my goal is not to become a billionaire or a millionaire. If I do, great. My goal is to focus more on the personal development side of things. So I'd say that six months from now, I see myself uh, living in a different place, not necessarily a different location, but different house. Um, having a much more strictly defined routine in the sense that I would like to start waking up earlier again and actually probably start um, training, um, for either like, uh, like uh, routinely training for like rock climbing or running. Um, 
like building up a home gym because we don't have any gyms around here anymore due to, uh, for rock climbing. And yeah, just uh, overall delegating more, delegating more of my work. Um, still working. Uh, you know, I don't have any issue with working, but delegating more so I can focus on other things. What? It's, it's a really good point, right? Um, and I, I think it, it's going to add a lot of perspective to people, right? Because it, money doesn't always have to be uh, the like the the motivation, right? I, I've heard people tell me like, look, I don't, I, I, uh, I feel bad, right? Because maybe my motivation is money or maybe they don't think of starting a business because like money doesn't really move them yet. They, they forget that, uh, the entrepreneurial journey is such a, you know, at the end of the day is, is, is the greatest journey of personal development, right? Um, and it's not just about the money. The money is a byproduct, especially when you don't chase it, money comes uh, in abundance, right? When you focus on yourself and what's in here, right? The money, you know, that translates into money as a byproduct. Um, but what are, if, if I may ask, right, what are some of those uh, personal development goals that you've got for yourself or maybe they're not clearly defined, but is there, is there anything that um, you've like got in mind? I would say they're, they're mostly not defined yet. Um, I would like to lose about 10 to 20 more pounds. The, the weight isn't super important to me. It's not like I have to weigh this amount, but, uh, like I, I do have a plan that I'm currently following, um, to get to a point where like, I'm very, uh, like if you look at the, the climber, the rock climbers body, you know, very lean, very fit, very toned. That's my goal. Ultimately just to feel better, be able to do what I love to do, which is rock climb. Um, and just enjoy life more and then just yeah just be able to do all of this while also having time for my family that's really my goal right now awesome uh yeah i just wanted people listening to hear that because it's not just about the money the money's cool and that can't be your main priority right but it, it, it's, there's a lot more to it um you mentioned focus on different things right uh, about close to a year now right well, maybe seven to eight months ago um I had this revelation, right? Uh, where my money problems were solved. And I was like, how can I make the impact bigger, right? How can I uh, give back even more and make this beyond me? Um, you know, you know, particularly uh, the mentorship, right? And I came up with this concept of a school. Uh, I then named it the School of Ecom. And my, uh, the concept was, yes, I could spearhead the mission of helping anyone start uh, an online business within the Ecom world. Uh, and transform their income, but also just like you did transform their life. Uh, but I didn't just, I, I didn't, I, I didn't want, uh, to the project to, to just be based around me, right? I wanted just like in school to be, you know, to have a bunch of different professors uh, to, that could add their expertise from their journey, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and I kept seeing this guy in the community named Tal Swisegood. Uh, obviously I knew, I, I knew who you were cause you know, it's a very tight knit community. Um, but, um, yeah, you, you kept coming up on the community, like adding value to people, uh, doing like this, you know, I, I remember when you lost this first client, like you did a, a loom, like a video, uh, basically walking everyone through your experience and what you learned. And it was like a 25 minute video. I watched the full thing and I was impressed, man. Um, and so when it came to, you know, I was talking to the general manager, Antonio, uh, and, and when he came to, um, uh, you know, thinking of people, uh, to just fit, uh, right into the professor, like teacher, uh, role, um, not the guru role, but the teacher role where, you know, they could add value to other people. Um, you know, obviously I, I, I thought of you and, uh, I, I thought you were a great fit for the role fast forward, um, probably like four to five months. Um, and, uh, you've joined the school of Ecom and you guys have may have heard me talk about this, this concept school of Ecom on my channel, but you're one of the, well, the main, uh, supporting coach, uh, at school of Ecom. Um, Speaking a bit about school of Ecom, and you know that's not the point of this this uh, conversation, right? Uh, but for people to get to know you a, a bit better, um, what excites you the most about this project that we've embarked on and that we've got um, in our hands right now? Yeah, when uh, when y'all first reached out to me about it, I was like, oh wow, you know, <laughs> what what I like to do. Um, a lot of what I like to do is like help people. And I used to make like these tutorials online and stuff. So when you had reached out and asked if I wanted to talk and have an interview about this, um, 
yeah, I just thought it was like immediately I was like, wow, that sounds like it's a good fit because I was already kind of doing that as far as not in any official capacity, but I was already connecting with other mentees and they were helping me and I was helping them as much as I could, sending off looms to them or whatever it was. So it really felt like uh, I was excited because it was like, okay, I can do this in an official capacity. And I think the best way to learn is to teach as well and to help people. So it's also a great way for me to learn, looking at it from that side of things. And yeah, I think, you know, there's certain points in life where whatever it is you're doing, whether it's an e-com agency or whatever it is, you look for answers to things and sometimes you can't find them. And I just remember there's a few instances where, man, I wish I could, uh, somebody was here right now to help me with this, whatever it is. So I just wanted to be that, fill that gap. Because I remember when I was in whatever spot it was, I was wanting that same thing. Just that connection with somebody else. So that's what sort of excited me. That, it's such a good point, man. And, and that's why I've always been such a big proponent of, of the one-to-one uh, interaction, right? And that's why, you know, like very openly, like I'm not a big fan of, of um, like these uh, courses with thousands and thousands of students where your voice is not heard like the the co- you know the the main coach is not nowhere to be seen like I wanted to have that that one-to-one interaction because I know how powerful it can be and also have someone that is just a few steps ahead of the mentees right and who's been through um, those you know that journey uh, very recently right because there's so many things that they can learn from my journey as well um, but also having that person that has been through the journey um, very recently and 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 uh, you know, has essentially been where uh, they are right now. Very recently, that's a, that's extremely valuable. And have that one to one as well with me, with uh, the other supporting coaches. Um, what are some some of the, the 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 main traits that you've seen in the mentees that have just blow things out of the water? Just literally, just have uh, exponential growth uh, within their agency and, and going to to really just crush it. They. Number one thing is they don't have shiny object syndrome. Like they, they stay focused, right? They can, they can sit down and focus on something until they get the result they were, they were after. Now that's not to say they, they're not, they're also analyzing the feedback they get during that process. They're not just doing the same thing, expecting different results, but you know, they're not trying to start an agency one day. And then a week later, they're trying to start drop shipping, you know, t-shirts mm. or whatever it is. Like they stay focused, they get stuff done, they show up to, you know, the one-on-one calls, uh, the round of one-on-one calls with you. They, um, you know, schedule calls with me to troubleshoot things. They're actively, uh, you know, showing up every day. Yeah. I think I think it's massive. At, at the end of the day, if you have a proven blueprint, right, battle-tested, other people before you have gotten incredible results, right? I myself have gotten incredible results. Like it's, it's battle tested, right? Um, the only way to fail is to just give up, right? Uh, and to not obviously, to, to also not have that one-to-one attention uh, when you are struggling, when you are, when you um, you know come, come, come uh, face-to-face with those obstacles that are uh, just a part of the journey. Um, so I think as long as you have that, the, the you know, someone who's there every single step of the journey with you, so that it's easier to go through that journey, it's, it's, it's pretty much inevitable. So, um, yeah, it, 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 it success, I, I like to say that success is, it's not, it's not easy, but it, it's pretty damn simple if you keep things, uh, sim- you know, if you keep things like simple. And, and uh, I like to say that, you know, simple skills, fancy fails. And, and when you try to do a billion different things, when you try to, you know, try a billion different, you know, ways of, of doing things, um, that's a surefire way of not getting results and getting very frustrated along the way. Absolutely. I mean, kind of play off what you said, making money, making, building a business isn't rocket science. It literally just isn't rocket science. So it's great to have that, uh, like you said, battle tested pr- process to follow. All right. I think that's a, that's a good wrap. I mean, we could talk about uh, we could talk uh, for hours, but uh, is there any any final words, any uh, anything else that that you want to uh, say? Uh, shout out! <laughs> I'd like to shout out my wife and son. <laughs> you know, they'll be, they'll be he won't be watching this. He might <laughs> be surprised. But no, yeah, she, it's, uh, uh, she's definitely proud. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, great having me on, man. I'm excited to 
uh, you know, get to work in my agency and also get super at continue to work with School of Ecom, see great results from, from everybody. Likewise. All right, all right. Then uh, thank you for coming on and uh, we'll speak in a bit. Bye-bye. All right, that is that for the interview with Tal. Now, if you enjoyed it, make sure to go ahead and leave a massive like on this video. And if you're interested in getting results just like Tal and taking your life to a whole new level, click on the link below the video. That is a link to booking a call with my team and myself to see if you're a good fit for the mentorship. It is obviously paid and I keep the tribe pretty small because I'm not a big fan of courses with thousands and thousands of students. So we keep it pretty small. That is why we have the application and vetting calls. But if you're interested in starting or scaling your e-com agency, you can go ahead and book in a slot. And with that being said, hope everything's gone well in your journey and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.